European immigrants flocked to Alabama by the thousands during the late 19th and early 20th centuries to work in the booming coal industry. Looked down on by locals, these immigrants, primarily Italian, usually lived outside of the town limits. Today, Casey and I will be searching a mining community built over a century ago for traces of their lost history that are now being overtaken by nature. Welcome to Little Italy. So, Casey assures me there's something right here in these bushes. I can't see it. But it's there. I can see a bunch of rock walls over there on that side. So I know there's still stuff going on. So we gotta go straight this way? That's right, let's do it. All right, show me what I'm missing. This just shows you, a lot of times people wonder about how all of the dump sites and the areas haven't been found or haven't been explored in years in our area. We got a lot of underbrush. I mean, we're in the dead of winter right now and you can see how dense it still is. But look at the wall and then all of a sudden it's round. So is this a cistern? I don't know what that is. steps up here, look those steps and stone. Oh, there is steps and straight up. Like another circle or something. I don't know what they had over here. That's weird, man. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like that. Wow. All right, I guess we'll keep following the trail of rock walls, right? All right, we're making our way up this little gully way right here. It's unreal the amount of modern trash here. I mean, and we're a good ways off the road. <laughs> Making our way up the hill a little bit. There was definitely a lot of something going on around here. Hey, there's your Yamaha gas tank. That's right. <laughs> so as we've been walking, these cisterns have been popping up. This is the first one that I've shown you. At first, we didn't know whether they would be a mine intake shaft, but the more I look at them, the more I really feel like these guys right here were just to hold water. Uh, we did bring big magnets with us, so we're going to toss in there here in just a second and make sure there's nothing down in there. This is in Bibb County, Alabama, and there was something that went on around the turn of the century that made Bibb County be called Bloody Bibb. Lots of crime, lots of crazy stuff was going on, and you never know when a murder weapon or something like that would have been thrown right down inside of one of these. So it would be pretty cool to find an old gun or something in there. All right, guys, we just dropped the magnet in here. It doesn't seem to be very deep right off. But that's not always a deterrent. Look at all the hot rocks that stuck to that. Oh, wow. So, Alabama's loaded with hot rocks. Brandon is gold magnetic. <laughs> no, I wish it was. Oh, bummer. You know what is, though? It's safe. So, if there's a uh, safe down there, you can pull it up. And good point. It. It's a fair point. So, what we're going to do is we're just going to make sure we cover every one of these the best that we can. And if I fall in, y'all are going to have to come after me. It's going to be America's Funnest Home Videos, then I'll, <laughs> I'll come after you. You got this. Yeah, I wish it was deeper. It just makes me wonder if it's flooded in or if it was always that shallow. I mean, we're in a low valley bottom right now, so the water table is a little different right here. More hot rocks. Now, explain to the audience what hot rocks are. So, oh, thought I felt something. Uh -uh. You, got a, you get a bite? I thought I felt like one. Uh, so whenever they mined a lot, it seems like a lot of our stone in the area had like an iron deposit through certain layers. And when it comes to metal detecting or magnet fishing, I've noticed that in almost every single waterway, you're going to pull up what we call hot rocks, which is just the mineralized rocks. It'll stick to the magnet. Mm, makes sense. So they are ferrous material instead of non-ferrous. I'm going to break out the old machinist terminology for you, which just means they're magnetic and have iron inside. I don't feel anything done in this one. That's all right though, because we got like three more to go. So let's He's keep not going. wrong. Let's go. So this, these kind of look like mill sites almost. Like there could have been a, a water wheel right here next to this little bitty trough of water. I mean, it doesn't look like enough flow to me. But if you turn around and look right here, it's like a cellar. You can see the rocks and you can walk right up into it. Obviously somebody in the 1950s dumped every single bottle that they had around their house in here <laughs> yeah i mean there's just you can't walk without the glass crunching so i'm having to look at the bottles and uh it's just kind of crazy how much stuff is here i mean when you look down here i mean there's just bottles everywhere most of it's not super old like that one right there is an old ketchup 
Suncrest bottle. Yeah, I don't know what this was, Casey. I, don't know, I like that little walkway thing still here. Yeah, I mean, it's almost too narrow for a, a walkway. Whoever built this, though, I can guarantee they're, they're dead. <laughs> yeah, they're we're no longer with us. They did a good job. They're still here. Yeah, I mean, 100 years later, and we were just talking about whether this was logged or not. It's really hard to say. I would have thought if it had been logged, the skitters would have crushed this. Uh, notoriously in Alabama, that is a real problem with history here as it's being lost to strip mining and to loggers. So that's why we film this kind of stuff. It may not be as exciting as some of our greatest find videos, but you know what? This is the stuff that'll be gone right here. It might not be here tomorrow. I'm going to cross the branch so I'm going to look at that little foundation over there too. All right, we're across the branch. Look at this thing, guys. Holy cow. Now, this is cool. Yeah, this is... I mean, this stuff's definitely right around 1900. The town was incorporated in 1901. Uh, the mining business here halted in about 1976. This site right here was done long before that, though. There were several waves that kept West Blockton alive. Uh, the first one was World War I. They did really good providing some of the iron, steel, coal, all that kind of stuff because there were coke ovens here. But then they died down, and then World War II popped up. That rejuvenated them for just a little while. And then after World War II, it was a steady decline after that. Looks like something's nesting in that hole right there. Yeah, I'll video you going over there and put your hand in it. All right, you ready? Ready, let's do this. Here we go, blooper. Here we go. Blooper reel. What's in there? Giant snake. No, dude. <laughs> ah! I was really going to do it. I was like, no. We got some dual camera action going right now. I'm going to try to jump across this creek. Maybe it's not terribly muddy on the other side. Let's see if I can do this live. Ooh! Oh, it. Oh, sunk a little bit. <laughs> is that your femur or is that your, is that your boot? It's just my boot, thank oh, God. Good. See these right here? This is either... Is that small gauge rail? I can't tell. That's, I would say it's narrow gauge. I, I looks like... like full, it? it almost looks like full gauge rail right there. So the railroad apparently ran across right here. I know y'all are not getting a really good visual representation to the geography here but we are on the side of a mountain this right here to the bottom believe it or not is about 50 to 75 feet you can see the water running and this is prime prime area for a coal mine and i think i'm standing on a rail bed actually which would explain the amount of trash the industry that was here was just so massive it was supposedly over eight square miles of mines here and that's not necessarily what we're looking for is mines today. I think this is a railway, Casey. Yeah, I think it is too. And I think it's like where it goes over that, uh, that little railroad bridge. Is down there. Remember? I do remember the railroad bridge. We had a video a few years ago. That's probably straight ahead. What's interesting, though, is the amount of modern trash that's here. There's a lot of stuff from the 1950s, 60s, and 70s uh, thrown off of the hillside. So I don't know what was up above it up there. But something was going on. So we're on the bottom side. This looks like the railway up here. Look at that right there. I'm about to go down there and look in that. This rock with the green moss on it is incredibly slick. So I'm going to be cautious on my way down there to that. But that looks too cool to not go look in. All right, we're down here. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. I don't think I want to go through there, but while I was looking, look right there. I see a bottom of a bottle sticking out. Looks like an old pickup wine. Let's see if I can get over there without breaking my neck on this slick stuff. Nobody will probably believe this, but right there is that bottle I was talking about. See it sticking out. Oh, wow. Is, yeah. is it going to be modern? No, that's old, but it's broken. Dadgum it. That is old though, man. Really yeah, that still may come out with us and be a real good cutter. I don't know, that's just cool because of the site this came from. <laughs> so, we just picked up a bottle. Long story, we're kind of laughing about what we thought it said. But it says ounces up around the top. That'd have been a shoe polish. You can see it's got a little bitty faint purple hint to it. That's from exposure to sunlight. Yeah, Tell them what I thought it said, Brandon. It's okay, I'm not it, look, it looks like it says Dungies. And I was like, I've never seen one of those. So where he was telling, I was like, I've never seen one. Let me see it. Yeah, it's not their fault. It's, it, it's, it's not my fault. It's their fault. <laughs> <laughs> it 
they need to get their uh, their lettering a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> the font style was wrong. <laughs> but that is about a hundred year old shoe polish. Uh, and then the green bottle that I found is could be all the way back to 1890. I mean, look how uneven the bottom is. Even yeah, you can yeah. look how thick it is on one side and not on the other. That color is beautiful. This is crazy spot right through here though. And like, I mean, there's pottery and stuff sticking out of the wall, like right there. I mean, it's just, there's glass in here. It's just a matter of if we can find any old and whole stuff. All right, guys, I see something embossed right up here. I mean, literally on the surface. Oh, oh God, it's broken, but look at that. It wasn't. It's a soda water. Oh man. Look, it's got the embossed stars on it. See, it says soda water. Property of Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Let's see where it was from. West Blockton, that'd Alabama. Be, that'd have been a good one. You know what, though? That's still a really good cutter, so we can cut it and make this into a whiskey glass. I'll take it down to right where it says Coca-Cola property of. Right. And uh, that's worth keeping, man. That's cool. Good find, dude. Right Heck yeah. There. They're out here. Uh, this hill right here has me out of breath, guys. It's steep. But take a look right here. That is a nice Moraline. Would have been a competitor with Vaseline. Right on the surface. So a lot of you may be wondering why they called this section Little Italy. Well, around the turn of the century, between 1880 and like 1901, whenever this town was incorporated, a lot of the Europeans were interested in the industry that was booming here. And the vast majority of the immigrants that came were Italian. And these Italians were actually looked down upon worse than African Americans, which is crazy. And they had their, their camps or their houses were further outside of the town. So the locals didn't have to deal with them. They had their own churches, their own schools, really all of that kind of stuff, which is interesting. And they were sent here, you know, they were gotten from Italy here. Then they had to stay in these things called dog pens. And they literally had them caged up like animals for a year to pay for their ride to America. That's true. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. I mean, this area is full of history, but a lot of it's sad. And like that soda water bottle that we found that's from the 1920s, that was probably on the tail end of a lot of what we're talking about. But that wine bottle bottom that we found by that little bridge that we were at is probably right at the era of where the Italians were first moving into this area. So definitely interesting. This is just beautiful land in here once we got past the trashy area where the houses were. But here we are on the other side of that bridge that I climbed down to earlier. You can take a look right there. That was the other side of it. A lot of work to build that berm right there for a railroad track or a road or whatever it was. That's a lot of work. A lot of work. And, and things like this should be a park. You know what I mean? It really should. Absolutely, it should be a park. And there's a friend of mine. He's actually a descendant of the town. His name is Mr. Fernetti, and he's trying to get funding. We're going to try to do something to make this some kind of a park. It needs to be. You know, the story needs yep. to be told. You know? And there again, thanks to Casey for getting the permission for us to be out here filming this. Uh, this is just one of those spots. It's absolutely beautiful, you know, to see, but the history is just so deep. I mean, literally, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that went on in these hillsides of Alabama that people don't think about, but we're headed to the next cistern slash well slash whatever it is. And uh, we're going to try to drop another magnet. Just hit another little trash pile. All that's in here are a bunch of lids and stuff, which is kind of interesting. I always keep these lids. I know it's a highly, highly unlikely proposition that I'll ever find the bottom side of these jars, even at thrift stores and stuff. But for some reason, I keep them. I just can't stand to see them left out here. As I throw that one down, let's put it in the backpack and keep on going towards the cistern. You can see right there that says matches. Casey just picked this up right here. This was like a matchbox holder. These were pretty common. They would have hung on the wall and you could have just slid your box of max matches down in there and grabbed them out. These are still pretty collectible. That's cool. We found a gun for the day. Found a gun? It's like a Colt 45. Oh, I see. <laughs> all that's left is the barrel. That's all we got left. But we did find one. That milk bottle right there. It's busted out the back side. Four mil chili, I suppose. Oh, I'll crack the pieces. That one froze. You can tell the way the glass is broken that's if that froze good. with water in it. That's probably a cool one. Dang. There's a lot of trash all down this bank. Check it out right here. Nice Wylam brick right in the creek bed as we're walking down through here. Lots of glass starting to show up. The mountainsides are surrounding us. And believe it or not, even following the water here, you could get turned around really easily. So we're looking for the other cistern and we're probably within a hundred foot of it. 
But for we, some, we have no idea where we are. We're winging it. We're having fun. Yeah, That's we're winging right. it right now. Yeah. Good news is, is we got water, and we're both a little too country to get lost. So yeah, we we've never been lost. We just didn't know where we're at, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, what is this? Oh, that's cool. Tramway bed, I suppose. Huh? Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. I told you we weren't lost. Yeah, we're close. <laughs> Just point me in the direction of Gatorade. Uh, it should be this way. <laughs> there it is, yeah. Let's go. It's one way or the other. We'll find out. Good Lord, I'm thirsty. Man, we're never getting drunk. What's wrong with that? I don't know. You know, February in Alabama, you would think that it would be freezing cold, and today it's about 75 degrees and 95% humidity. And uh, time we'll get an intern to come with us. An intern, <laughs> that intern needs to have a backpack where he can carry us out of here. Wow, so you see the giant hill right here? This is a slag pile, that's all backfill out of a coal mine. More than likely, they're covering a coal mine up that sat right here. These right here are not rocks, those are cement pillars made, and these were pull pillars. They would have had a big eyelet on it with a big iron cable and a giant motor. And just so happens, it looks like. The motor is still sitting over here, half buried, which is crazy to think about. Yep, look at that. The motor that would have pulled those huge buckets out is right there and half buried. Well, that thing has seen better days. Look at those more pull pillars. Oh, there is more, more pull pillars. You can see the, these guys a little bit better. Yeah, that's close enough for us. Yeah, and that's concrete. Yeah, and there's your pillars right there. So at this point, we have to be very careful. When you're dealing with a... I always spread out 20 feet apart. Like There's no kidding, you know what I mean? Because uh, if somebody falls, somebody can get help, you know what I mean? Yeah, we, we try to leave a gap in between us when we're walking and not get super close together. Like you said, if one of us goes into the shaft, uh, at least the other one can go out and find it. If you're standing close together, you'll go right through the bottom. Then you're in a heap of trouble. There again, more pylons for this mine. I bet you they were pulling it out right there, and that's covering the original yeah, mine. I was say there was a whole big thing here, you know, whole, and they probably pulled it straight. I, my understanding is it's a vertical shaft, but I don't, I, you know, you never know. Yeah, that's super cool, though. Finally, we found it. We kind of walked around in circles. But here's another one right here, guys. I'm going to climb over there. We're going to drop a magnet in it and see what's down in this hole. If I had to date it, I'd say at least turn of the century. Look how clear the water is right now, though. I mean, it's hot enough. I'm thinking about just jumping in. Just swim for a minute. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, like, we are dying right now. It is hot. It's middle of winter. All right, let's get the magnet out. All right, here we go. This one is a, about a foot deeper, it feels like, than the last one. It's hard to tell if I'm on a root or a limb a lot of times. There is a lot of roots down in there and limbs and logs from the storms and debris because here in Alabama, we get a ton of tornadoes. So what, what's something you would like to find in here? You know, honestly, I think it'd be cool to pull out something mine related. That would be pretty cool. Because we know that the coal mines are right here. This is true, yeah. It'd be cool to get like an old lantern or a safe deposit box. You know, you never know. Oh God, you see that? What was that? Was something in there? Yeah, I think it was a big frog. Are they magnetic? That's some... Might look to be an alligator. <laughs> well, look how bad this one is. Let's see here. Nothing but hot rocks. That is wild, man. That frog's like, man, what in the world is this? What has not happened? It's either a frog or anaconda. Yeah, probably. I feel like we're in the jungle right now. Yeah, tune back in after the commercial and let us know what it, what it, what it really is. <laughs> Stay tuned. Negative on this one. Hot rocks. Oh. I'm wondering if they're filled in. You know what I mean? very it's very possible. It's very possible that this flooded and filled in, so we got three foot of silt on top of the good stuff. But that's all right. That's part of it. We'll, we'll keep looking. We find any more. There's more out here, but we don't know if we're going to be able to find them today. We're going to try, though. We're about worn out. We're going to try it, though. We got this. Yeah, and it's about to rain, too. <laughs> so I've been thinking about those, what I was calling cisterns that were along that creek. And I'm wondering, after seeing the railway in there, if those were actually holding spots for water for the steam train, which makes sense now that I'm thinking about it. 
I'd love to hear from you guys, though, in the comments below. And let us know what you thought about this adventure. If you'd like to see more adventures like this one that are not necessarily out digging for treasures but actually exploring, let us know about that in the comments, too. And we'll see you guys in next week's video.